Boom. Hey, everybody. Tuesday. Episode 30. Three zero. Episode 30 of The Nooner. Welcome, welcome. Today we're going to be talking about whose responsibility is motivation anyway. Marco, thank you for being here. Bill, thank you for being here. Welcome, welcome. This is The Nooner. We're at episode 30. I'm your host, David Bradley. And we're going to get ourselves started today. And we're going to get ourselves started today. Just make a quick little shifty shift here. Boom. How are you guys doing? Did you all uh, have a good Labor Day weekend? Hey, Bill, when do you guys honor uh, labor in the UK? I know here in the States it was yesterday, but uh, and same in Canada, but I think it may be in May uh, up there, over there across the pond. Let me know. Thank you for the restreams and the favors, everybody. Welcome again. Uh, this is The Nooner. My name is David Bradley, and I am your host, where I'm going to be coming in every single day at 12 o'clock noon, Pacific Standard Time. I'm going to be dropping a noontime nugget about sales, business, or life. I just asked my guy Bill when they celebrate Labor Day in the UK, and Bill says it was last week. Okay. Um, that's interesting. I don't know if you caught um, my meerkat from yesterday, The Nooner yesterday. We talked about the history of Labor Day in the United States. And I was reading that in a lot of countries it's in May. So I was just curious. But apparently it's also uh, into summer in the UK as well. So happy Labor Day. So uh, what we're going to be talking about today, though, is whose responsibility is motivation? Motivation. Whose responsibility is it anyway? Okay, we're going to dig a little into that. Uh, first, let me introduce myself to you guys. Thank you for being here for those of you that just tuned in. Uh, if you want to catch previous episodes of The Nooner, there's a playlist over on YouTube. Uh, so you just go to YouTube slash Cardone Solutions, and there's a playlist called The Nooner, where you can get uh, all 29 previous episodes of this. And again, we're coming in every day, 12 o'clock noon, Pacific Standard Time. We're dropping a noontime nugget about either sales, business, or life. Today, we're going to cover all three. Uh, again, I'm David Bradley. I the, My three things, I'm a sales and marketing manager with Grant Cardone. Got started with Grant in March of 2011. Grant's technology took me from barely surviving in sales to thriving in it, and it enabled me to accomplish things I never thought were possible in my life. So uh, it, I feel it's a, I have the honor, the privilege, and the duty to pass this material on to other people. Salespeople should never have to suffer should never have to wing it. And I want to, if you're a salesperson, I can come into your company and, and help you guys increase production 15 to 30 percent simply by finding and then handling missed opportunity. So if you got a company or a business and you feel like there may be some opportunity to gra- gather up, I can help you find it. My other thing is I'm the author of a book called How to Stop Smoking Without Killing Anyone. I smoked cigarettes for 15 years, finally found out how to kick the habit. Uh, and it is to not quit, but to stop. And I found a way to do it. I wrote a book about it. So if you're at that place, if you're thinking, man, how do I stop? How do I quit? How do I get off these things? Or I know somebody who is struggling with that, check out a website called stopdon'tquit.com. You can get a copy of the book there. Uh, It's available on Amazon as well as Kindle. And my third thing is I'm the founder of a hashtag called Rich Man's Gym. Now, this hashtag is evolving into a book. Rich Man's Gym, home-based strength and conditioning for body, mind, and spirit. So today we're going to be looking at motivation. That's who I am. Pretty simple guy, right? Basically, I'm in the help business, right? Uh, Bill left another comment. He, Bill says that uh, Labor Day is in May, but we have bank holidays. <laughs> kind of misread that. We have bank holidays and had one last week. Oh, okay, cool. All right, sweet. Good enough. So motivation. Do you have a team? How many people uh, are on your team? Is it a team of one? Uh, Is it a team of many, right? And do you have a challenge? Are you challenged? Is it difficult sometimes to keep this team uh, motivated? I mean, hell, is it is it hard to keep yourself motivated, right? I mean, who who doesn't have that as a challenge sometimes to get motivated? Okay, Uh, you ever like, man, what am I going to talk about in the meeting today, right? God, what am I going to do? 
What am I going to say? How do I get this kid motivated? This kid, he's just, he's not even motivated. What am I going to, how do I, how do I help this guy? Right? Is that you? You ever look in the mirror at yourself and be like, dude, what are you doing here, man? How are you going to get going? How are you going to get up? Okay. So, you know, look at that guy. I mean, why even bother? Look at him. Right? You ever felt that way? You ever been there? Right? I bet my guy Marco knows what I'm talking about right now. Okay. So picture this for a second. Okay. 930 in the morning on your job site. Your receptionist, your operator, he or she, this is what they're going through when they showed up to work today. Okay. They had a fight with their spouse. They need new tires for their vehicle, but they don't have the money to replace them. So every day they drive, they're not sure if they're going to have a blowout or not. Okay. They, they just had a fight with their spouse, like I said. Okay. They've been listening to the news the whole way in here. Okay. Um, and they were afraid they were going to be late, so they didn't have time to stop off and pick up their venti, no-foam, skinny, two-pump vanilla latte. And that's who's talking to your clients. That's who's picking up the phone. What are they doing right now? They're selling, right? Even though the receptionist, the name tag doesn't say sales, they're still selling. They're selling the people that are calling your company on why they made a good decision to call or why they made a bad decision to call. These are your people, okay? That's who's in front of them, okay? So that's your client's first impression is, you know, and, and instead of just being a receptionist, could that have been a salesperson? Could that be you? I'm not saying you drink a skinny, two-pump, non-fat, no-foam, vanilla latte, venti, whatever I just said. Um, but could that be you? Could you have a morning like that? Okay. So you got to make sure that before you start your day, you get your head on right. You put this thing on, right? That you're not just physically at work, that you don't just show up physically, but you're mentally and emotionally, you're here, you're in the game. Okay. So that being said, you got to keep in mind that successful teams are built from the top down. It starts with leadership. I think we can all agree on that. And if you look at great teams, there's usually a really kick-ass leader at the top of that team, right? Follow? Make sense? Vince Lombardi? Example? Phil Jackson? Example? Okay. So, if you're a leader in your group, then you basically have a fiduciary and moral obligation to make sure that when your people show up to work on time, they're here with their game face on that they're at work, that they wipe their feet at the door, right? That they're here, and they're in a good mood, and they're happy to be here, that they've left all of that other stuff in the car. So there is one simple best practice that you can start doing right now that can result in a huge increase in your production and gross profitability. What do you think that is? What's that one extra thing that you can do with your people to help them make sure that when they get to work on time, they're in the game? That's a daily meeting. Every day at a very specific time, we meet up and we do something as a team to unite, have a few laughs, Make sure that we showed up to work on time with our head in the game. And again, if we look at great teams, who does this? If you're on an athletic team, do you guys warm up and have a team meeting before you take the field? If you are a Navy SEAL, do you guys have a mission briefing before you go on the mission? Okay. If you're an actor, do you spend time with the cast getting into character and getting your game face on and getting your head right before you take the stage? Right? Okay. So as a sales professional in a sales team, wouldn't it make sense to put your hat on so that you're here, right? I didn't just hop on this nooner randomly, right? I spent some time getting my head on right before I come in here. I cleared my head so I can give 100% attention to this moment, okay? That's why that music, it's not just for you. When I start this thing off, that music, man, I love this music. Okay, it's funky, right? Gets me jacked. Okay, I don't want to show up here unenergetic. That wouldn't be fair to you. Okay, so 
you have to do something for your team to make sure that their attitude is on right. Okay, so that's a short, brief daily sales meeting. If you got multiple shifts in your organization, then do one at the start of each shift. Right? It doesn't have to be this long-winded deal. Okay, it can be as short as five, ten minutes. And the purpose of that meeting is to get everybody's motivation right. Like I've been saying, get their head in the game. Okay, so. How you do that, though, is really up to you. Somebody just joined in with a killer profile pic, and I just want to give a quick shout-out. Uh, Edwin Califano, you have pretty much the best profile pic I've ever seen. Congratulations. Thank you for being here. Uh, hey, R... I can't... R.Y. Aaron, if I'm pronouncing that right, says, hey, this is my first time watching a stream on Meerkat. Well, thank you very much. You know what they say, you never forget your first, and I'm really glad you're here. We're talking about whose responsibility and motivation is, and I'm talking about it starts with leadership right now, and I'm going to give it a very simple suggestion on how to have a daily sales meeting to do that. So, again, how you do that meeting, though, it can be up to you. Now, I have clients that work with me with either one of our online universities, it, it could be Cardone University or Cardone On Demand, that use that program specifically to run a daily sales meeting to get the attitude right for their people. Okay, This is where a virtual Grant Cardone pops in on a virtual level and delivers five to ten minutes of motivational content that, that the manager will pull out of our program. And he can do that based on um, something specific he wants to work on. He can pick something at random. He can have a salesperson pick the, the, the segment. But as a group, they just sit down and watch a segment in our online program and have a very short discussion about it. And they use that to start their day so that we're all on the same page, heads on right, we're here, we're ready to rock. Okay. Now, if you'd like a couple examples of some of these meetings, uh, send an email out, david at grantcardone.com, and I'll send you a couple links on YouTube that are private, but that we use as examples, um, and I'd be happy to do that for you. Now, if you're not using Cardone On Demand or Cardone University, fine. Grant's YouTube page has over 1,500 videos that you can use literally for motivation, inspiration, skill development, and Grant's blog, uh, grantcardone.com slash blog, <laughs> go figure uh, can be used as well there, there's, we don't delete material once we add something to Grant's blog it's there okay? and it's always about helping you get to another level so as far as meeting topics that blog is a wealth of resources okay? I got a website called Cardone Solutions which also has multiple posts, videos, examples that you can use in your meetings um, but let me give you four tips for this meeting Okay. So we're talking about motivation, whose responsibility anyway. I say leadership. It starts at the top. It's got to trickle down. Okay, And we do that in our organization with a short, daily, effective sales meeting and four tips to make these meetings work. Thank you for the restream, Laura. Thank you for the restream footballers. Welcome. Kathy, thank you for the like. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Appreciate it. I got some new faces in today, so this is great. Appreciate you guys being here. So here's four tips on how to make a daily sales meeting work. Number one, it's held daily. That's why it's a daily sales meeting. Okay, number two, um, this may be more than four. I just realized that. The second thing, though, is you want it to be short and at the same time. So every day, 9.05, we're having a meeting. Every day, 8.35, we're having a meeting, whatever time, but that's it. At the start of the shift, maybe you got two shifts, right? So one's at 8.35 and another one is at 12.05. But we're doing a daily meeting as a shift, as a team, and we're going to keep it short. 20 minutes, that's it. Set an alarm if you have to. Really, like, we're done. 20 minutes, I'm out, okay? Um, you you want to use the, uh, the meeting to get the team's attention on purpose, What's the purpose of the company? Where are we going? What do we want to do? What's our goal? Why are we here? Okay, and make sure we've got attention on that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Bill says that Grant's Periscope some of his team meetings. Everything I'm talking about happens in these meetings. Okay, that make sure that we got our as a team the attention's on purpose. Okay, so if you're a football team, what's the purpose? Well, win the game, right? But there's more to it than that. Okay, because where are we at in the rankings and where are we at? You know, so we talk about that and what's the purpose? Okay, the third thing is that we want to be able to motivate, inspire, and remind everyone of successes that the company's having. Okay, and the possibilities. What is possible for us as a company? Where can we go? I would much rather be thinking about what is possible for me and my company than uh, what is wrong or why the fridge stinks. 
right? So we want to talk about what is possible. And then we, the fourth thing is to provide education, which means skill development, that the sales team can use to succeed. So that may mean after the, that meeting segment, we spin off a little bit and do some role play or we practice, okay? Now, so essentially, whose responsibility is motivation? Leadership. Trickles down, okay? To do that effectively, we're going to have a short daily sales meeting as a team. Now, sidebar, note, independent sales professionals or people in a company whose leadership doesn't get this or doesn't do it or it just doesn't happen doesn't put you off the hook. You're not excused from being motivated. So, ultimately, the ultimate end of the day response on whose final responsibility and motivation is? You. It's on you. Okay? It's on you. It's on me. It's on everybody. Okay? Um, you should show up to work already jacked. So when that meeting happens, you're just adding wood to your fire. Make sense? Okay. So I sold cars for 10 years. In the car every single day on my way to work, what was I doing? I'm listening to Grant, Grant's material. That's why I work here. Okay. I'm literally listening to this every single day. And I'm listening to some of his live stuff because like Grant Cardone Live, fantastic to listen to in the car on the way to work. Why? Because when you show up, you've, already, you've had a few laughs with Grant because that GC Live is hysterical. Okay. And secondly, it's also skill developing. I learned more closes from that than I think from digging into like a, one of his specific closing material. I got more out of that Okay, because it worked for me. I enjoyed it. So I showed up to work already positive. I go into the meeting. Boom, that's even bigger. Boom, right? You just keep adding, stacking it. Okay, Because ultimately, like I said, the responsibility for who's the most motivated, it's on you. Your motivation is your responsibility. Okay. So currently what I do now in the morning is I do six segments a day out of the Cardone On Demand or Cardone University. That's how I start my day. I get up, I write my goals down, I bang out six segments. It's a habit now. It's a ritual. It's like breakfast, right? That's why we're doing the nooner, right? You've had food for your body. I'm going to give you some food for your brain. This is something to keep you moving on into the rest of your day, okay? So remember... You too, as an individual, you have a fiduciary and ethical responsibility to bring the best you possible to your work, your customer, and your family. All right, so I'm going to wrap this nooner up with a quote from my guy Uriah Hall, UFC fighter. I like the UFC, if you haven't figured it out. He says, this guy goes three rounds at UFC 175 with a compound fracture in his toe. Imagine, like, physical violence with another human being with a compound fracture on your toe. Here's what he says. With the compound fracture after the fight, he says this to Joe Rogan. He says, if you're not going after your dreams, you just exist. You don't want to exist. You want to get the most out of life. Okay? He had enough motivation to go three rounds with a broken toe and not quit. Okay? So he's responsible for his motivation. And then he's got coaches and people with him that help him. Okay? That's what you need. Okay? So number one, you take full responsibility for your motivation. Number two, if you're a leader in an organization, do everything in your power to make sure that your team is motivated. If I can help with that, reach out to me, david at grantcardone.com, or hit me up at 310-777-0352. This has been episode 30 of The Nooner. I'm your host, David Bradley. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you for tuning in. Reruns up on youtube.com slash cardone solutions playlist. The Nooner.